So next we have uh, David Landros, who's taught literature of the English Renaissance at Berkeley since 2005. And he is currently completing a book on the silver and gold money of Renaissance literature. Please welcome him. <laughs> Thank you. This is the first Sestina written in the English language. Um, it's by Edmund Spencer. He inserted it into the August eclogue of the Shepherd's Calendar, um, his sort of manifesto for the refoundation of English poetry, which he published in 1579. Um, a Sestina is a sort of medium short form. It's a virtuoso form. Um, it consists of six six-line stanzas, which don't employ rhyme, but instead repeat the terminal words of each of the first stanzas, six lines, in a different pattern, um, an intricate pattern that is dictated by the form um, and in the hands of a master, um, a pattern that is exploited rather than a pattern that is sort of seems to force itself upon the poem. Um, and then there's a, se there's a seventh stanza in which uses half lines, um, still repeating the same six words. Um, in this poem, Spencer takes um, a relatively sort of familiar and even banal vocabulary of the, you know, the complaint of the melancholy lover to the solitary woods in which he finds himself and which he has sought out um, and transforms that reading experience um, through a formal and technical virtuosity that is literally unprecedented in the English language. Um, in that nobody had tried to do this before. Um, and that, to my mind, is still unsurpassed, but I'll let you be the judges of that. Ye wasteful woods, bear witness of my woe, wherein my plaints did oftentimes resound. Ye careless birds are privy to my cries, which in your songs were wont to make a part. Thou, pleasant spring, has oft lulled me off to sleep, whose streams my trickling tears did oft augment. Resort of people doth my griefs augment, the wallid towns do work my greater woe. The forest wide is fitter to resound the hollow echo of my careful cries. I hate the house, since thence my love did part, whose wailful want debars mine eyes from sleep. Let streams of tears supply the place of sleep. Let all that sweet is void, and all that may augment my dole draw near. More meet to wail my woe, being the wild woods my sorrows to resound, than bed or bower, both which I fill with cries, when I them see so waste, and find no part of pleasure past. Here will I dwell apart in ghastful grove, therefore, till my last sleep do close mine eyes. So shall I not augment with sight of such a change my restless woe. Help me, ye baneful birds, whose shrieking sound is sign of dreary death, my deadly cries most ruthfully to tune. And as my cries, which of my woe cannot be ray least part? You hear all night when nature craveth sleep. Increase, so let your irksome yells augment. Thus all the night in plaints, the day in woe, I vowed have to waste, till safe and sound she home return, whose voices silver sound to cheerful songs can change my cheerless cries. Hence with the nightingale will I take part, that blessed bird that spends her time of sleep in songs and plaintive pleas, the more to augment the memory of his misdeed that wrought her woe. And you that feel no woe, when as the sound of these my nightly cries ye hear apart, 
let break your sounder sleep and pity augment.